Good afternoon. Uh, uh, great performance by our guys going back and looking at the film uh, yesterday. I thought uh, we played really well on all, in all three phases. It was uh, a really fast, uh, fresh, physical team, and that's what we were hoping for coming off the bye week, and that's what uh, we were able to, to do. And uh, I thought offense, defensive line controlled the tempo of the game, and, and we had a couple of big plays on special teams uh, that uh, were, were really good to see. Went after a punt, blocked a punt, and had another nice return punt and kickoff that shortened some fields for us. And uh, obviously really pleased with the overall performance. Now the key is to try to replicate that uh, for this week coming with a, a really talented Colgate, ke Colgate team. Spent uh, all day yesterday watching those guys, and uh, uh, there's a reason why they're the eight seed. They uh, played an excellent game uh, last uh, Saturday against JMU and, and deserve to win the football game, and um, we'll have our hands full. So open up for questions. Their competition, I know, is not the same as the Missouri Valley. So how valid can you take what their defense – Five shutouts this season. That grab your attention still? Yeah. You're still shutting people out. And uh, I'm really impressed with those guys defensively in the fact of uh, they're a bunch of older guys for starters. You know, they're a veteran team on defense. They get off blocks. They don't, they great in block destruction. They don't stay blocked. Uh, they understand their fits. And I think they're an excellent tackling team. And uh, that's how you're good on defense is you don't give up explosive plays and they don't. And they're an excellent tackling football team. Chris, are they kind of a traditional 3-4, or how do they kind of deploy their guys? Yeah, they're, they're a more traditional 3-4. Um, you don't know where that fourth guy is going to rush. Sometimes they'll just rush three. Sometimes they'll bring um, two off of a side. Sometimes they'll just bring one. But uh, it, it's kind of varied a little bit based on the game that they're, that they're playing, you know, whether there are a lot of single high, we would say, more than two high uh, defense. And i uh, really impressed at, at all three levels of their defense. You know, it's not like you'd say, wow, they're, they're inexperienced in one spot uh, or another. I think they have great experience and uh, a really good talent at, at, at all three levels of the defense. You know, um, he had an AC uh, joint separation in his shoulder. I think it'll be a touch and go this week. Um, we'll move Spencer inside full time this week, Wagey will. Uh, and uh, I, I would say he would be doubtful, but we'll see how he progresses. He's not out for the year, but I don't know if, if he'll play this week and, and we're on a week-to-week -week, uh, schedule anyway. For his five turnover, I mean five interceptions Colgate got against uh, JMU, did they disguise anything that you see, or was they're, they're just forcing some pressure? Uh, a little bit of both, I think. One, they've, their guys have really good ball skills. Their corners have excellent ball skills. Uh, they were able to get some pressure. Um, on the quarterback, and then uh, you know they, they capitalize on a couple of errant throws, and uh, um, that's what uh, good defenses do. And, and there's a reason why they've given up seven points a game, which you know, as Dom mentioned, you know, shut it, shutting out as many opponents as you have. You know, for us to look at the Army game with their offense is uh, a little bit tricky, but uh, uh, I know from a physicality standpoint, uh, they matched up really well with Army, and, and uh, uh, they definitely have a, a legitimate, really good defense. Now that Snyder's retired, your name's going to be tossed out there for the Kansas State stuff. What's your Yeah, thought? obviously, uh, for starters, there's an icon in, in the profession in, in Coach Snyder, and I remember as a, as a high school kid going to the Iowa football camps and sitting in the quarterback lines with, with, uh, with Coach, and uh, uh, what an icon, great, uh, great run he had at Kansas State. And I understand uh, the fact that um, I have a tie uh, to Gene, and that's probably why my name's going to be mentioned. But, uh, you know, our, our focus uh, is going to be on Colgate. My focus is going to be on Colgate, and, uh, you know, that's what we'll talk to the kids about. Just block out the outside noise, and let's let's focus on the task at hand, and that's to be successful like we have every day to try to give us a chance to be successful on Saturday. Contact with Gene? No, I have not had any contact with Gene. How do you guys go about approaching a game like this where you don't have crossover film, anything like that? You haven't really seen much of them. Are you focusing on their last couple of games most? or? Well, we're trying to dive in as much as we can. You know, we have every game, so, you know, we're trying uh, – to pick the four down teams for us on offense and, and, and things. But uh, um, you, you want to try to look at everything. Uh, there was a couple of games I know that the quarterback was out for the defensive guys. Um, and so we're trying to maybe – I don't think the game plan changed a whole lot from, from when they played the backup. But uh, uh, you, you look at everything. And that's, that's the thing about playoff football. You're up there probably a little bit later at night. You're up there – you get up a little bit earlier in the morning trying to make sure that you – uh, see everything, see all the pictures, and, um, you know, a lot of teams, as you get late in the season, kind of become who they are, and we have the same way. So we'll dive into everything like we typically do. 
big with the two weeks off for the tailbacks in the offensive line. That was as good as they've looked all year. Yeah, I thought it was really big to have those three kids healthy at the tailback spot and uh, to not you know, overutilize one over the other and, and to get them all uh, a number of carries. I was really pleased uh, with our offensive line. All those guys, you needed a week off. Their shoulders, their backs and stuff were, were banged up, all the O-line as well as D-line. And so I, I was really pleased with uh, how physical we played and, and just how fast we looked. You, know, you look back at games, and I try to – late in the season, look at game one to game five to game eight and so on. And you can see heavy legs late in the season. I thought uh, we looked really fresh. Now the key is for us to get our work done um, because you're you're preparing for a new team that we don't know anything about, uh, but also try to keep them fresh and make sure they're ready to go for Saturday. Wilson now a full go moving forward. We, we sure hope so. Um, we got to find out today. Uh, he'll, he'll run around. He tweaked his knee um, during the uh, bye week uh, and – because of that, we just said let's just shelve him this week because we're, we're still want. You know, we, now we for sure will be able to redshirt him, and uh, with the other three guys healthy, um, where Seth's going to be a, a factor for us if he's healthy enough, we'll be on special teams. That's the thing that you lose sight of a little bit playing at home. Uh, you get to dress everybody. Well, now in the playoffs, your roster's cut down so much. You saw Bruce on on special teams. You saw Ty on special teams. You saw Grimsley on special teams. You know, if Seth could be out there and help us, then he could give us a, a, another lift on teams. He's the name day finalist today for the Campbell Trophy. Just, I know we ask you so many times yeah. week in and week out about him, but that's a pretty good honor. Yeah, it's pretty a great honor. honor for him. Uh, I think the dinner is tomorrow, and his folks are out there with uh, Matt and Todd, and it, uh, what a great honor. And then I know that he was a, a finalist as well for the Walter Payton, and um, excited for him as well to, to be a finalist. It's um, just seeing that everybody is seeing what we are, uh, that uh, they were able to vote him in to get to one of those finalists is a great honor for him. Discussion of him going out there, getting it? Uh, for tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a quick dis- guess, discussion about it uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, uh, he was not going to leave his team and leave his preparation. Easton's a really diligent, organized guy, and the things that he does Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, we're not going to be able to permit him to give himself the best chance to for him to be successful and for our team to be successful on Saturday. Did you try to talk him into it? Did you try to talk him into it or just, no, just go I, I really didn't. Uh, just because I know him, I, I've known him for so long and know him so well uh, that, um, you know, that's why I'm so excited that Mike and Shelly could go out uh, and represent uh, Easton. And uh, uh, Easton's uh, more about East, more about the team than he is about himself. Uh, that's what makes him so great. And I don't think he could look at all those seniors and say, I'm going to miss a couple of days of prep. And, and uh, How important is it to the development of, of even the younger guys when you talk about December reps and then you do have one that gets away from the other team and, and have an opportunity to play other guys in the second half of the game? Well, you know, once again, we only dressed 64 guys. So we didn't play that many guys, but we were able to get everybody that was dressed other than Dimitri into the game. Um, so, I mean, those are always positive things to get – you know, a Beagler into the game, to get a Kubis into the game, and some of those younger uh, tight ends, old linemen. I think that's important, but uh, you, don't, you don't go into that thinking that's going to happen either. Nine straight quarterfinals that this team has been through. I mean, you've been around the league long enough to know how impressive that, that stretch is. Is that hard to, hard to think of sometimes? <laughs> no, just because you just go one week at a time and stuff. You know, when you, when you take a step back and look at it, I, you know, I didn't realize we were playing this 11 o'clock game how many years in a row now? Uh, that, that's pretty remarkable to be playing in that 11 o'clock game in that uh, major ESPN game. And that's, uh, I think, the, the sign of our program, the sign of the brand of NDSU football. And uh, um, nah, it's just these kids, and I'm so uh, pleased with how they've attacked each week from August 2nd up until now. The ESPN thing's still a big deal because you've been on so much. I mean, when they first started getting on, it was that's all you could talk about around here. Yep. I think it's a huge deal um, for the out-of-region recruits that uh, we're continuing to work on and continuing to talk to that uh, maybe for whatever reason are at a place that doesn't have an ESPN Plus or, or, or ESPN 3 that the, those guys are able to watch that. And uh, I think uh, anytime you can get that exposure out there uh, on the major networks, it's a, it's a definite plus in recruiting. Anything differently this season? Are you feeling like it's maybe a little bit easier adjusting to the early signing period, you know, with the being during the playoffs? Because last year was obviously the guinea pig year. Yeah, you know, I don't know if it's easier. We're just uh, more familiar with it this year. Um, you know, we are probably official visiting more kids during the season than we did last year. Um, does that 
make it right. We still have to sign the guys. So, um, you know, I, I think still what we do and what our coaches do uh, throughout the year, you know, it's a 12-month process now, but what we do throughout the year, I think, um, lends itself to give us an advantage this time of year. Pull out a blueprint for this 11 a.m. game that you've done it this many times to say, hey, this is exactly what we've done in the past? This is exactly what we've done in the past. You know, we change our Friday routine. Usually uh, we just have uh, from a video a couple of special teams and then save some of the other stuff for Saturday morning. Um, but uh, we'll get all of our work done Friday uh, afternoon and uh, uh, evening. I still want to get them out of there uh, relatively early, hopefully get them back uh, uh, home by 8 o'clock so that um, uh, they can get some good rest and We'll start at 7.15, and um, I really like the 11 o'clock start. I don't know how the, how the guys feel. I think some probably like it. I'd much rather have it at 11 than 4, 6, or 7. So, um, no, I think the guys are pretty excited about uh, another challenge for this week. Okay, the defense seems pretty opportunistic. Is there anything that you do this week, be it coaching or drills through practice, to emphasize ball security? No, uh, I think we do. Coach Mess and, and the offense staff do a phenomenal job of that in general of, of – I think they're plus 16 turnover margin, which is remarkable. The quarterback does not turn the football over for them, and they're, you know, they they do a great job of of, of being ball hawks in the secondary. And um, but uh, it's explosive plays, turnovers, and special teams. And I think both teams, you know, you're in the top eight, and chalk is held, so there's really eight good football teams left. So explosive plays, the turnover margin, and special teams. We always talk about the hidden yards, you know, making sure that you field a punt. And we did a great job of that last week with a punter that was punting it all over the place, a block punt, a return where you're getting a first down and getting 12, or a return where you're getting 25 on a punt return. Those hidden yards are, are, are really important in a game like this. And, you know, a guy that, you know, in a 52-10 to 10 game, you think, well, how, how were your special teams were good, but uh, – Cam Peterson was phenomenal on Saturday. He eliminated the kick return from them. Uh, and the two that they brought out had great hang time, hung in the corner, so we got him inside the 25 anyway. Your mantra is a lot of um, field goals aren't going to beat you. Does that mantra change a little bit when you play a defense like Colgate? No, you just got to keep him out of the end zone. <laughs> you know, and, and for us, on the flip side, you know, uh, try to. we've been so good. This is as good a, a – team as I've been around of scoring touchdowns in the red zone. That's why Cam doesn't have many attempts and, and many field goals, but uh, I'm convinced of that. You know, they made a, they do a nice job, make a nice play. Um, we blow a coverage and they get it down to the five yard line and we bow up and find a way to give them only three. You talk about a lift on the sideline and then we get a big return and it's seven to three, just like that. And I'm thinking, boy, I'm sure they're hoping it should have been seven, seven at that time. It's such a huge lift when you can hold a team to three, especially after an explosive play. How different is it to, to play a team that you've never played before? Because these playoffs kind of seem to be a lot of, you see a lot of the same team. I know it is. It's been fun. You know, this is going to be the second week in a row that it's going to be a new challenge for our guys. And um, to be able to go watch uh, a new team and, and have great respect for, you know, those guys follow social media and see these guys statistically, defensively, um, see that they beat JMU. Um, that, you know, they beat a good New Hampshire team uh, that uh, our guys, I think, are excited about a, a new challenge, and, and I hope the fans are too. You get another, uh, another team in here is always fun. What do you attribute that red zone success to? Is, I mean, this is almost, I don't want to say unsustainable, but I mean, the, the numbers are, are kind of incredible. From an offensive standpoint? Yeah, I, I, think, it's, yeah I think just the multiple formations uh, that uh, Coach Mess and the offense show, uh, the amount of guys that are, touching the football in the red zone. It's not just uh, the backs. The tight ends are a huge part of our, our red zone success. Uh, the quarterback run game is a huge part of our red zone success, wide receivers, whatever it may be. But the fact that I think we're really difficult to prepare for, not to say, well, you're just going to line up in two tight ends and a back, and here's what you're going to get. We're lining up in every formation known to mankind, um, which uh, we're still running a lot of the same things off of. But I, it's tough to to be able to practice against all that stuff, especially as these weeks get shorter. We notice it on defense. One of the questions was, you know, watching film, we're going to watch all 11, 12 games on these guys. Well, we can't show every play, but we need to try to make sure that we can – hone in on their most important things that they do just like they need to do with our offense. And that's tough when you're trying to pack in 12, day, 12 games into three days of practice. Chris, you believe you got the guys' full attention and with them beating James Madison of what they what JMU has done with you guys the last two years that you'll get their full attention? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that today. Um, 
because we haven't had we haven't seen the guys as a, as a group yet. We'll see them this afternoon. But uh, without without question, I think when you see you know this team beat JMU a few years ago um, in the playoffs, and then uh, you know they held serve at home. Uh, I think. Once you just sit and watch them, and I, I didn't know what I was going to expect to see until I watched all afternoon and into the evening yesterday um, how sound they are, how fundamentally sound they are. They run really well. They're physical. They, they get off blocks on defense. They tackle well. They, you know, the quarterback makes the right decisions on all the RPO stuff and, and all their read zone stuff. They run a, a different scheme where they're, where they're kind of highlighting the defensive tackle and making him the read key. Uh, they do a great job of those things. And so um, it's a veteran staff and, and a group that's been around there. They know their personnel really well. They're playing with a lot of confidence. You don't win as many games as they have and in, in, in the style they have with blowouts and uh, and so forth. That uh, um, They're a confident team. And, and our guys know once you get in the playoffs, uh, boy, anybody can beat anybody, and you, you better have your A game. And that's the – that you know, we played as complete a game as we played – on Saturday, I really feel that was that was the best game we've played this year. But we always are talking to our guys: can we raise the bar and get a little bit better? And uh, there's some areas that I th- still think we can improve. Your offense is it just goes to James Holland. I mean, is that like area number one trying to limit Colgate? Yeah, you have to stop the run, and that's going to be Holland, and it's going to be the quarterback because the quarterback does such a great job. He's similar to Easton as far as making the right decisions on on, on the read zone game and, and on some of their midline option run. Uh, he does a great job of that. So we, we have to be sound in our fits. And then when you if you're not sound in your fits, we're going to have – gash plays on us, uh, but then that also uh, creates some one-on-one opportunities outside with DBs and wide receivers, and we have to be really good uh, in coverage as well. Uh, Mike Houston left James Madison, and, and he was lamenting part of it because it could have got messy with the with the way things worked out. He was lamenting the December 19th signing date that he thought that – any thoughts there as to how that has affected coaching movement? Yeah, that um, that's a good question, Mike. Um, because it's just year two of it, um, I, I don't know if it's – hurting the profession by people losing their jobs earlier when people get fired. Um, I, I know it's tricky as far as a hiring process because of the fact that uh, you're down to a couple weeks in, uh, of the signing date. I'm not a, I, don't, I know that the early signing period's here to stay. I don't think it would be better to say let's do it November 15th. I think it would be more cause for problems of somebody losing their job earlier than that. Um, I, I think one of the the areas that will be talked about in uh, in legislation would be should you do it August first? Should you have everybody through the spring summer? That's when most of the kids are going and checking campuses out. I know that's uh, a lot of people would say, well, you're asking a kid before his senior year to make a decision, and I'm I'm mixed on that. But if it would clean up some of the uh, the, the hiring problems that probably that we have right now in, in college football. Uh, maybe they'll change that date, but um, I, I think we're probably are going to have another couple of years in this cycle. Chris, is there a common theme with the eight teams left that you know of? Is there a, a trait with the, uh, with the eight left that you can tell? They all want it home. <laughs> yeah, <I'm back>. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, not other than just seeing the scores, uh, Dom, I, I don't – you know, I just watch really what happened on on our side, um, and uh, you know, I haven't seen Kennesaw play. I, mean, I hear about the option and stuff. Obviously, we've seen South Dakota State play, and we know how good they are. Uh, and then uh, um, Colgate's trying to prove a point. They got a chip on their shoulder, and um, they, they they deserve to win the game. And on the other side, down below. You know, I didn't watch any of those games. You you probably know better than I did. If that if that if all those games turned out. Yeah, a couple of them were blowouts, a couple of them were close. The televised game you mentioned is great for recruiting, great for exposure, but do you think there's also an advantage with your guys having been there before and potentially the lights being too bright for the other team? No, I don't think they're going to worry about that. If you had a bunch of young guys, potentially, these guys are a bunch, they got so many seniors and juniors that have played the game, and um, nah, they're, they're not going to be intimidated by anything. I think they're a really well coached, sound football team that. Uh, we have to play our best football to have an opportunity to be successful.